CataractCoach.com. Refractive lens exchange for a hyperopia and use of a multifocal lens to address the presbyopia as well. So here's the patient, plus 3.5 hyperope and as well a presbyope, so well past the age of 50 here. And you can see beautiful dilation, really not much cataract changes at all. And that's pretty typical here. For refractive lens exchange, the beauty is we're able to correct all this without trying to steepen that cornea. And I've never been a big fan of LASIK for high degrees of hyperopia. It's just too much steepening required. So here at the beginning of the case, looks like some anesthetic going inside the eye. My LASIK limit probably is around plus two-ish diopters for hyperopic LASIK. Other than that, you really want to do an eye well-based surgery, especially if the patient's already presbyopic and beyond a certain age. Let's say the patient's 60 years old. It kind of doesn't make sense to do LASIK. Here comes the main incision. Here you go. Nice single plane incision. Loosely filled anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Here's a little bit more. There's the uh, dispersive viscoelastic. Looks like HPMC. Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Very commonly used outside the U.S. It's just a very easy one. Doesn't require, does not require refrigeration. And it's relatively inexpensive. And so here we go, starting off the Rex. It's important to get a beautiful Rex. It's in someone who's paying out of pocket for a refractive lens exchange. So nice technique here with the cystotome, bringing that around. Let's see, is it going to be 100% cystotome Rexus? Looks pretty good. Nicely done. So in a patient like this, yeah, when you get that, that uh, multifocal lens in the eye, you really want to hit that Plano target. And for a lens like this, you really want to be as close as you can to Plano. You don't want the patient to end up a little bit myopic, so don't overestimate the lens power. You want to be accurate there. So now let's see, BSS cannula, doing some hydro dissection. I like to just get the whole nucleus out of the bag if it's relatively soft. There's a delineation as well, maybe. And then another good way. There it is. There's the nucleus coming up. So I do that same technique here. I like to get that nucleus up out of the capsule bag, recoding the endothelium there a little bit. And now the phaco probe, relatively easy to just aspirate this down. So very important that you don't want to cause any posterior capsule trauma here and have vitreous prolapse, especially in an eye that's having such an elective procedure. These eyes are typically correctable to just about 20-20 vision. And you're doing this for primarily refractive purposes. So now getting that lens material up, and you're mostly using vacuum, so don't, don't put a whole lot of phaco energy here because the nucleus is so soft, you'll go right through it, and you can nail the bag. So be careful. Yeah, just vacuum like that and just bring it on up and let it just start to follow it. And so you don't want to give too much energy because if you give the energy, you'll break that vacuum hold. And so there it goes. Aspirate's out nice and easy. Time to clean up the bag, take out that cortex, and get that lens in. Now, you can certainly um, uh, put this lens in. These lenses do come in torque powers as well. So it looks like this one, we'll see at the end here if it's torque or not. And if it's not torque and the patient has, let's say, a half doctor, 0.75 drops of astigmatism, you probably want to address that too. You want these refractive patients to be as close to absolute emetropia or plano as possible. And that means more than just spherical equivalent of Plano. It means don't leave them with a lot of residual astigmatism. So most of these lenses, the lowest toric power, at least in the U.S., is about a diopter of the corneal plane. So if the patient has less than that, don't just leave them with 0.75 of still somewhere. Fix that astigmatism. There you go. Cleaning it up very nicely. Nice looking Rex is beautifully centered. Here comes the viscoelastic to fill the capsule bag. And let's get the lens in. So these cases are fun. They're fun to do. The video's obviously been edited we just want to show you the whole case here. So delivering the lens, nice and easy. Let's see it go in. And this is that um, Johnson & Johnson Technus Synergy lens. And looks like a non-toric version. So getting that in the capsular bag. So perhaps this patient, like typical patients over the age of 60, has a little bit of against the rule astigmatism, and therefore this phaco incision at the 180 mark can help to neutralize that. Taking all the viscoelastic. Now, another thing we talked about before, and you have good videos on cataract coaches, lining up that IOL with the appropriate axis. And we talked about angle kappa and angle alpha and the visual axis and the pupillary axis and all those things. But see those Purkinje images? A nice easy way is get those Purkinje images lined up both in that very central zone of that optic. And that will give you pretty darn good performance for most patients who have reasonable angle alpha, angle kappa. And so here they go at the end of the case, get that viscoelastic out of the eye, and then hydrate up and seal those incisions. And you can have very happy patients. 
Just remember, if you're doing a, someone who's very hyperopic and they're used to wearing glasses, those hyperopic glasses provide magnification. Everything looks bigger. So some patients who are high hyperopes and you make them emetropes, they may say that they've missed the loss of magnification. But nice case here. Thank you for watching.